The very opening is the same as the original Star Wars. This includes the 20th Century Fox and Lucasfilm limited production titles. The opening crawl is done in the same style as the original, except with Episode 1, The Phantom Madness. The opening crawl text will be missing the line, Greedy Before Trade Federation, and Endlessly is missing before debates. The Guardians of Peace and Justice in the Galaxy is also missing. We scroll down to the ship. All of the CGI is purposely made as retro as possible to fit the look of the original trilogy. For example, the CGI characters that would be puppets are computer generated to still look like puppets. So if they are cleaned up in any way, it is not obvious that they are different. So they still match the look of the originals, but are capable of more animations. All explosions and everything is CGI animated to almost completely match the original trilogy. CGI is even used to give the movie a retro look, added to make it feel more like the original trilogy. So making it connected to the originals and keeping the integrity of the original series is priority. So that ship matches the look and feel of the ships in the original trilogy. Very special care was made for this to be the case. This gives more life to the new trilogy, making it a more clear part of the same universe. The ship approaches the planet in blockade. Inside, the adult pilot looks worried. It is fine to show the two Jedi from behind. Qui-Gon Jinn says, Tell them we wish to board at once. It immediately switches back to the ship's approach and landing. The music remains grim and scary and does not become a beat at any point. The Jedi walk into the room with the protocol droid. It leads the two Jedi into the room and says, We are greatly honored by your visit, Ambassador. Make yourself comfortable, mine. He explodes immediately, a trap. Shrapnel has cut into the two Jedi, badly injuring them and causing them to scream in agony. We switch to inside of the ship where the co-pilot is saying, Have you? And the ship explodes without warning. Droidica surround the entrance into the chamber of the two Jedi. As they enter, the Jedi force pull a shrapnel out of their wounds to throw everything that they can at the Droidicas while bleeding and attempting to pull themselves upward. The Droidicas activate their shield generators, and one of them blasts Qui-Gon Jinn in his right knee, splattering blood and causing him to crawl. The two Jedi look extremely helpless. Filled with Jedi power from their anguish, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan Kenobi cause the Droidicas to explode, even within their shields. This contains the shrapnel from the robots, but when the shields disappear, fire and fuel within the remains rage into fires of black smoke. An alarm blares, and automatic fire safety procedures cause extinguishers to put the fires out as best as possible. Helplessly, the Jedi are forced to crawl through corridors like helpless victims while being stalked by B-1 battle droids. Those droids do not speak, but act like cold-blooded killers. The Jedi are forced to use force powers to pull themselves quickly around corners to avoid fire and get hit several times. They are both near death, dragging their bloody bodies behind cover and using the force to throw stuff, blow up droids, and pull cover in front of laser fire. They throw their bodies upward and into a ventilation shaft, using the force, hurting themselves even more. They're screaming while the droids try to fire upward through the roof into their prey. The material of most of the roof is too strong for their blaster shots, so only a few shots make it through, one of them hitting Obi-Wan in his right thigh and hurting him even more. The nearly dead Jedi force push themselves along and through the shaft and carefully force land one another behind cover in a ship hangar, fighting pain. They have to carefully pull themselves and all of their blood that trails into storage upon a ship. All of that blood covers them except for their nostrils and mouths, which areas they keep force pushing the blood away from. We go to the Trade Federation Viceroy and Chief Lieutenant conversation with the Emperor Hologram. He is displeased with the lack of Jedi corpses, and the Viceroy attempts to explain how they cannot get anything into the ventilation shaft to finish the Jedi off, but figures that the Jedi might be dead or close to it. The Emperor promises to send him a Sith. Darth Maul to go into the ventilation shaft and check for himself. On the way to Naboo, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are convulsing and dying. This causes them to shoot out force blasts, which send the ship out of control, flying at insane speeds into space. The Trade Federation pilots are killed in the process, and as Obi-Wan dies, the Qui-Gon Jinn goes into a force rage, hurling the ship at Tatooine. The ship is about to crash into Anakin's home as he and his mother watch helplessly. He screams out and cries, but uses the force to land the ship safely.
It is evening and night approaches as Anakin and his mother investigate the ship, but once inside, she tries to pull him away from the corpses. He cries in terror. They leave the ship and go back inside their home, leaving the ship for others to investigate. Few come and look inside the ship, and many steal things, then leave. Nobody gets too close to the blood-covered Jedi corpses. Anakin can't sleep, haunted by what he saw. Eventually, he does sleep, but has a nightmare of the Jedi corpses coming back to life. He goes out to look at the ship and forces himself to enter it and to look at the death all around him. He uses his power to bring the Jedi back to life. This is done almost on accident, as if he doesn't quite know exactly how that he did it. The blood-covered Jedi scare Anakin, who races home and hides. His mom hears and comes to see what is shaking him. They eventually see the Jedi, who move almost like zombies, having just risen from the dead. 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 The moment Anakin used pots of water to attempt to remove the blood, and the Jedi regain senses during, she washes their clothes while they wear blankets. They talk and explain their situation and recognize that Anakin has astounding force power, having brought them back to life and landed the ship. Anakin has a big race coming up that day, and without sleep, doesn't look forward to it. It is explained how that he is being forced to race for Watto, as his slave. Obi-Wan objects to Qui-Gon's plan to steal Watto's ship to get to Naboo. Qui-Gon justifies his plan by Watto's slavery over Anakin, and a need to protect Naboo. By himself, Qui-Gon somewhat tortures, and then kills Watto, then steals the ship. He also takes all the fuel that he might require. Meanwhile, Darth Maul lands, and then investigates the ventilation shafts. He comes to the conclusion that the Jedi stored aboard one of the ships that landed on Naboo. Within the control room, he reports his findings to the hologram of the Emperor. He is then ordered to go to Naboo and kill them. Qui-Gon invites Anakin to go with him, but the mom refuses. She doesn't want her son taking any part in this. Plus, they have devices implanted internally that will blow them up if they try to leave the planet. Obi-Wan feels distant from Qui-Gon's path and tries to rationalize with it. A mixed force on behalf of Gardula the Hutt comes to investigate the ship that the Jedi arrived in when they almost crashed into Anakin's home. This creates an encounter where the mom is taken hostage by a bounty hunter, not a fed, but one that also has a jetpack and flies off with her. Crushed emotionally and fearing for his mom, Anakin realizes that there is no way to rescue his mom without endangering her. They, the Jedi and Anakin, look at Gardula's hideout, watching it from a distance. They each realize the very high probability that Anakin's mom could be killed at any attempt to rescue her. Using Watto's ship, the three fly to Coruscant to make the Jedi Council aware of the situation. The Council, including Yoda, explained that a Jedi force was sent to Naboo already to search for Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, as they had failed to report. Qui-Gon pushes for Anakin to be trained and reveals his power. The Council realizes the potential threat of Anakin as a Sith, so they know that he must be trained out as a Jedi, no matter his mental state. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are sent to Naboo to help the Jedi force already there. That force attempts to liberate Thede, the capital of Naboo, but each are hunted and killed one by one by Darth Maul Dury. Thinking these were the Jedi that he was searching for, he reports to a hologram of the Emperor within the Royal Palace, which now houses the Trade Federation Viceroy Newt Gunray and his Chief Lieutenant. <laughs> Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan land on Naboo, away from the city, and attempt to join their fellow Jedi. They find themselves overwhelmed by forces and being stalked by Darth Maul. The two Jedi are separated. Qui-Gon Jinn gives Darth Maul a much tougher fight than any of the other Jedi, and somehow disappears when Darth Maul finally strikes him down. Using the Force, Qui-Gon explains that he was somehow able to sacrifice himself in exchange for communication from the afterlife, because this is what he wanted above all else. So his wish is granted, and that was so that he may guide his friend Obi-Wan and save him. He is now a ghost, and the image scares Obi-Wan to death. Obi-Wan is continually stalked and almost killed by Darth Maul and battle droids on several occasions. Using Qui-Gon's advice, he is able to find a way to defeat Darth Maul by exploiting weakness. <laughs> Obi-Wan infiltrates the palace and attempts to assassinate the Viceroy, but they escape and flee the planet. The droid army keeps Obi-Wan pinned down within a room inside the palace. He is under siege and forced to force jump through a window and upward to another level. Badly injured, he is forced to hide within a storage compartment while awaiting death. Eventually, he cannot take it anymore and emerges from his hiding place in a frenzy. He attacks all droids in sight, but finds out that a Jedi army has arrived. He rejoins them as they liberate the city. Much of the Trade Federation is forced to flee, and the trade blockade has been broken. It is revealed that Qui-Gon Jinn had communicated to Yoda the situation, and then that Yoda had acted upon it. Princess Amidala is shown screaming at the Jedi for being too late, as so many of her people have been killed and tortured by the Trade Federation. She is in such a state that she needs to be restrained and even put into a cell. 
She has gone completely crazy and punches the walls within her cell until her knuckles have turned bloody. Obi-Wan uses a force to mind control her into a relaxed state of mind. 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 <laughs> she is then transported to the Jedi Temple to be left under observation. Anakin comes to visit her and they become friends. It is shown how he is in despair with his mom as a captive and possibly dead. Both are scarred emotionally, but Anakin shares with her what he has been taught, encouraging her. The people on Naboo want their princess to return and are angry with the Jedi for taking her. They demand her immediate return. She is in a much better state of mind thanks to Anakin and thanks to his Jedi training. They are both much stronger mentally when he is returned to Naboo. She insists that he will visit her once his Jedi training is complete and he promises to do so. When he does return to visit her, Senator Palpatine is also visiting her and promising to incur support for her within the Senate, revealing that through corruption, the Trade Federation has many supporters. This sends Anakin into a tirade, angry at how ridiculous the situation is, right in front of Obi-Wan and Chief Palpatine, the Emperor. It ends with Princess Amidala agreeing with him and them both feeding into one another's rage, while Obi-Wan tries to prevent it. Anakin suggests liquidating the entire Senate and starting over. This makes Obi-Wan angry, and Senator Palpatine interjects himself toward Anakin and Amidala's ideas, feeding them even more. Finally, Obi-Wan is able to rationalize with Anakin, but it shows that Princess Amidala is mentally unstable and can be easily manipulated by Anakin. Taking Anakin aside, Obi-Wan suggests that Anakin is using the Force over her to manipulate her, and this causes Anakin to react defensively, showing his guilt. While they are privately discussing this, Senator Palpatine is shown manipulating Princess Amidala towards his ideas, although they must be kept secret from Obi-Wan. She agrees. That is how Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, ends. ends. ends.